as the reconstruction shown uh, with uh, this method. And the I MNET is you know, one of the global implicit re representations where it's one latent code for the entire object. So their latent space only includes things that are in category, only includes chairs. So even if you show it on an airplane, it still has to produce a chair where our airplane is re represented by composing you know, grid sized local shapes that came from chairs, but into an airplane. Um, in another kind of straw man comparison, we can reconstruct. So if you're given point samples, very sparse set of point samples, and then uh, asked to reconstruct a scene, of course, ours is going to be able to encode and decode the local shapes better than MNET, which just has to encode the entire scene all in one big latent vector. So you wouldn't expect that to work, and in fact, it doesn't. Um, and if we compare to traditional 3D re re reconstruction methods, so explicit ones, so if the input here is a sparse point cloud, like shown on the left with the green points, and uh, our goal is to reconstruct a surface, uh, Poisson surface reconstruction at level 10 is what's shown on the right. That's the best level for this scene. Uh, and uh, our method uh, is, is able to reproduce some of the uh, local shape features and smoothness that you'd expect in a scene based on priors that you learned from ShapeNet better than PSR, which is just trying to reconstruct what it saw. And the numbers bear out that uh, we have pulled out experiments and we hold out some of the points and then measure errors that we actually are doing better on that task. Okay, and then this final thing, the, the comparing to a global implicit learned decoder, our method can be more efficient because the network that's required to decode the uh, the 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 network that's being used being used to decode the, the the latent vectors can be much smaller if all they have to do is is encode a shape space that is for a small grid cell as opposed to entire objects. And so we use a much smaller MNET style network in order for our decoder. And so it has one sixteenth the parameters as MNET and you have to uh, evaluate eight of them for each point instead of one. So it is uh, twice as few um, evaluations, uh, but uh, much, much, much less storage. Okay, so that was, that was a lit local implicit grid. So that's probably the, the simplest example of this idea of decomposing space with an explicit representation and then storing latent codes for each part. Uh, another example is uh, local deep implicit functions. So this is a paper that was done by Kyle Genova, uh, again at CVPR 2020. And the, the idea is quite similar. It's instead of decomposing space into grid cells, it's decomposed space into a mixture of Gaussians. So each of these ellipsoid looking things drawn in wireframe describes a region of space which has smooth fall off with a Gaussian. Uh, it's an anisotropic oriented Gaussian. And each of them has a latent code that is encoded, decoded by a deep network to produce a local uh, uh, implicit function. And then those local implicit functions are combined in order to um, produce the overall implicit function which defines the shape. So why do we use Gaussians? Um, they're able to be positioned at any position in space. So the problem with grid cells is that they uh, have a very fixed location and size and space and orientation. And so the shape space that you learn for grid cells has to be learn all possible local shapes at all shifts with, with relative to the grid cell, so all possible translations within the grid cell at all orientations and at all scales. So uh, the, the shape space that you have to learn when the grid is actually more complicated than it needs to be. If you could somehow uh, orient your coordinate system that in a way that's consistent for all shapes, then the, you, you can be, your, the, the local decoder 
doesn't really have to be invariant to translation or rotation, things like that, 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 are, that happened prior to giving to the coordinate system for the, the, the local decoder. So that's the idea here is that we can put our little coordinate systems anywhere in any orientation at any size, in any scale. Um, another reason that mixtures of Gaussians are advantageous is, is that they vary smoothly uh, with the parameters of the Gaussians. So if you move a, a, a Gaussian, the, the shape defined by them is, is very smoothly. And um, uh, this is a property and, and, and topology changes are free and things like that. So this is a property that I uh, was kind of first described with blobby models or metaballs or soft objects in computer graphics, you know, all the way back in the eighties where people used to uh, describe shapes by adding more and more Gaussians uh, and and then th this would be the explicit. Well, I mean, it's an implicit function because you're evaluating a mixture of Gaussians, but this would be um, just the result of, of doing that without any deep learning. Um, and but we're going to add to that uh, uh, for each of the Gaussians, we're going to have a latent code that's going to allow us to produce uh, finer grain shape variations of, of what is each little local uh, function, and that's going to give us higher accuracy, but with a similar strategy. Okay, so how does that work? Well, just if we had an encoder decoder, we would take an input surface. We actually, uh, for the simplicity of, of the encoding, we, we represent, even if we get given a 3D surface, we, we represent it as a set of depth images. And then we give them to a, the stack of depth images to a CNN. And that directly outputs all the parameters for the Gaussians. Um, that describe the shape. So we fix the number of Gaussians, 10 or 25 or 100. And then we um, ask the network to produce the 10 parameters for each Gaussian directly, which the yet colored boxes here is 10 parameters for the Gaussians, plus 32 parameters for, or, or so for the latent code. So, so there's actually 42 values in each of these little colored squares which describe the, the decomposition of the space and the latent codes. Um, the, the latent codes are actually um, decoded, uh, encoded um, after the, the, the Gaussian um, parameters are, uh, are computed. So in our encoder, we take the depth images, the Gaussians are produced, and then they're used along with point samples to actually encode those local areas. So in the end, you end up with Gaussian parameters and latent codes. And then in the decoder, there's an interesting aspect to this, which is that the, the decoder actually combines the implicit function that's produced by the local decoder uh, as, as a modulation to the original Gaussian function. Sorry. So Gaussians uh, fall off gradually and, and from, from the center in, in an anisotropic oriented way. And already kind of describe a gross shape for that local region. Uh, and so the local, so rather than ask the local decoder to also learn that, um, we asked the local decoder to produce a modulation to that. So the, the local decoder is only adding details, not, not describing the, the gross overall uh, shape. Anyway, so there's a multiplication here. And then all the lo local functions produced this way are summed to produce the overall implicit function. So going to ev evaluate this you know, experimentally, um, if we were to compare the accuracy of autoencoding on a, a shape net data set from, from 3DR2N2, which is a typical data set people use for these kinds of things, um, the, the thing that I just described is in the hours column here, SIF is, is what would happen if you had just, if you hadn't used the deep networks uh, it, in a strategy like this. So you just use a network to encode the parameters of the Gaussians, but then you don't add in those local implicit functions. So this is like what you would have gotten from a learned, just, just a, a mixture of Gaussians. The thing below is a mixture of Gaussians modulated by the, the output of a decoder implicit network, that deep network. Anyway, and OCNET is, uh, at the time this work was done, the state of the art in methods that um, uh, globally encode a latent code for every object and then try to decode it all at once without decomposing it into different regions of space. And so these are qualitative results um, that suggest that ours is better and 
and then here's just another example. Uh, if we look at uh, quantitative results, I don't want you to look at all the numbers. Uh, the, an interesting thing, and I think all papers should do this when they evaluate the results, is, it, is that it shows the results. Uh, F-score is a measure of how well you re reconstruct the, the full surface. It's a, like a precision times recall kind of thing for within some sort of threshold. Anyway, um, the, the horizontal axis here is a set of examples in the test set. And they're sorted by how well, in this case, our method does. And so you not only get an average like you do in the, in the table on the left, but you actually understand like what kinds of errors and, and are being made by the different methods. And, and, and is, is one method just have catastrophic failures for some objects, but otherwise does pretty well and so on and so forth. So anyway, I like this visualization as a way to evaluate results. And, you, and the, the images on the top are examples from the, the right column is our worst case, our worst examples, uh, and the left column is our best, you know, one of our best examples. Anyway, so the, the method does well compared to previous work there on, on autoencoding. Uh, another claim here is, is that by having smaller regions that you're encoding and decoding, you can generalize better. This is the same argument as it's in, in latent implicit grids, where because the shape space is, is part sized, it's uh, easier to generalize because you're composing small things to make big things. Uh, and that bears out as well compared to other methods. Um, in this case, we're going to see if it works on depth image completion. So you give it a depth image and then you have to output the whole 3D shape. Uh, and so the encoder outputs these, these uh, Gaussian blobs and then the, the, um, the decoder uh, uh, from, from a single depth image and then the decoder goes and and, and fills in all the shape. And uh, compared to other methods, it's did very well. Okay, and then finally, the same argument is in latent implicit grids. The, the size of the network that LDIS needs to use is, is much smaller than one that would be a global network for all possible shapes. So again, the, the shape space it has to encode is much smaller. And so we can use a much smaller network. And in this case, uh, compared to OCNET, it's using 0.4% of the decoder parameters uh, for its decoder. So that's a good thing. Um, so those are all very cool things, but I think the coolest part of this is that the encoder that learns the mixture of Gaussians and where, you know, put places the Gaussians and, and their size um, learns to produce Gaussians that are consistent across shapes within the same category. So these are different airplanes with pretty radically different shapes. But if you, with your eye, um, look at, you know, this, let's say this, this teal shaped thing here at the end of the wing, I don't know if you can see that. Whoops, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Uh, they're, they're always in the same semantically equivalent place, uh, similar with the, um, with the tail here, even when the tail is like really different uh, across different things. Um, this is actually better visualized um, by, by showing a, a navigation of the shape space learned. So if we, this, this space on the left is a 10 dimensional space, which is just the Gaussian parameters of the Gaussian. So it's not with anything about the implicit networks, it's not using the 32 values for the implicit networks, but it's just showing you where the Gaussians are. And, and what you can see is, is that as you move through the space, uh, there's a smooth interpolation of where the Gaussians are for things within the same class. So the same um, uh, elements are, are used in a similar way for all the examples within the same class. And even across classes sometimes, I mean, uh, the, the, the left front leg of a bench is you know, using the same Gaussian as the left front leg of a chair and so on and so forth. Um, and so this actually gives us the opportunity for uh, applications like shape correspondence and um, structure extraction and things like that. Okay, so that's local implicit, deep implicit functions. And I'll describe one more example. Um, this is a paper that was done by Zhang Shen that will appear, uh, I guess, next month in ICCV. Um, the idea here is instead of decomposing space into local regions, we're going to decompose uh, 
X, Y, Z based on resolutions and frequencies in space, spatial